Hello, football fans. How you doing? <coughs> well, let's recap the Saturday and Sunday action in the wild card. Um, we'll start with the Saturday game first. The first game uh, between Cleveland and Houston. In a nutshell, this game was pretty close. It was pretty exciting for the first half. And even for the first six minutes of the third quarter, when Joe Flacco reverted back to his old ways and threw a pick six. And before you could sit down and eat a slice of pizza, he threw another pick six and turned your sets off there. Um, Cleveland was slowly turning momentum their way. It was 24-14, to 14 and boom, boom. Before you know it, it was 38-14, and that was it. C.J. Stroud was amazing. Three touchdowns in the first half. Cool as a cucumber. Lots of poise for a rookie, the youngest quarterback ever to win a playoff game in the NFL. So congratulations to the Houston Texans. They're moving on next week, and we don't know who they're going to play yet because we still have to wait for today's uh, action between Pittsburgh and Buffalo. <coughs> Second game, also an AFC game, where I thought the weather would be more of an equalizer, but... Because even Kansas City's not really accustomed to this extreme weather. Are they accustomed to bad weather? Yes. But even this weather was just not out of the norm for them. But Miami, I think Miami really regretted losing that game to Buffalo last week because they would have been home playing in South Florida against the Bills this week. But it looks like they didn't even want to be there in Kansas City anyway. They were tackling poor. Offense could not generate nothing other than that Tyreek Hill touchdown from Tua. There was nothing doing for the Dolphins at all. It was pretty bad. And so Kansas City wins this, wins that game. They also have to wait for today's win between Pittsburgh and uh, Buffalo and see who they play next week as well. All right, uh, Sunday games. The Packers and the and the Cowboys. And let me tell you something. I put, I thought Dallas would win 34-17. As a Giant fan, I take great pride in the fact I was wrong in this prediction. Thank goodness. Screw the Cowboys. Screw them every day. I don't care. And people kept saying this is the best chance they have to win a Super Bowl quite some time. And although the talent is there, I had to remind people that the only team with a winning record they beat all year were the Eagles at home. And they were playing the Eagles towards the end of the year when the Eagles were god awful. Despite all the fact that the talent is there for the Cowboys. I mean, before you could dip your wings into some blue cheese dressing, it was 21 nothing Packers. It looked like the, the Cowboys expected this to show up and win this game. Because I cannot explain what I saw yesterday. <clears throat> Although, truth be told, we shouldn't be surprised because every time Dallas plays a big game, whether it's under McCarthy, Dave Campo, Jason Garrett, it doesn't go well for the Cowboys. Whether it's Dak Prescott at the quarterback helm, Tony Robo, or Drew Bledsoe. And if you're a Cowboy fan, you just have to be scratching your head. Although, I'll say it again. Why should you be scratching your head? This is quite normal for you guys now. All right, and let's just get over it and say it again, like I said last year, the year before that, the year before that. Dak Prescott is not a Super Bowl winning quarterback. He's not a playoff quarterback. He's not. But let's be a little bit fair here too. In fact, let's be very fair here. It wasn't all his fault. The Dan Quinn defense, you know, the Dan Quinn that blew the 28-3 to three lead in the Super Bowl against the Patriots. His defense was god-awful. I mean, there had to be about four touchdowns yesterday where there was no Dallas defender on anybody, including the, the Green Bay backup tight end. That's how bad it was yesterday. And, uh... The Cowboys is back to the drawing board. You have to ask yourself, was Jerry Jones calling Bill Belichick by halftime saying, hey, 
how would you like to set the all-time coaching record as you're trying to help us win a Super Bowl for the first time in 30 years? <clears throat> you got to wonder if McCarthy's going to be back, but even if, if you do let him go, would Belichick take the job? You know, we know Jerry Jones is a hands-on guy. And if he's that desperate, he's going to have to give Belichick full control. If not, Belichick's going to Atlanta, it looks like. His, the Falcons are hot after him, even though the Cowboys have all the talent in the world. But they do need a quarterback. Sorry, I know you're paying Dak a lot of money, but he's he's not going to win you one. All right, we, we've seen too many mistakes by Dak Prescott in big games where he's not going to do it. And even if you do keep McCarthy, well, what do you do next? You're paying Prescott too much money. McCarthy's pretty much stuck with him. What do you do? Same old dilemma for them boys. You know, it's our year. Them boys is our year. And King then becomes the, uh, and it's like, well, we'll get him next year. This is our year. And then, it's been a repeated cycle for going on, was it 29 years now with them? I don't want to hear nothing more from the Cowboy fans. So, the Packers advance. They will go on to play San Francisco next week in San Francisco. And we'll really see how good the Packers are next week. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to take anything away from what they did yesterday, but I'm kind of mad at myself for picking the Cowboys. I should have known better. But because Green Bay was a young team, even though they were hot down a stretch and Jordan Love was looking real good, the Cowboys did look great at home this year, even though they beat anyone with a winning record. So, I should have known better. I know that. But, hey, it is what it is. Only we'll see how dominant the 49ers can be. And, of course, the final game yesterday, the game of the weekend, the game I was looking forward to the most, the Lions and the Rams. Matt Stafford come back to Detroit to play his old team for the first time. Against Jared Goff, for the guy they traded for him, the first time it's ever happened in playoff history, and the Lions win this one 24 to three. The difference in the game was when the Lions were in the red zone, they scored touchdowns. When the Rams were in the red zone, they scored field goals. Jared Goff was 22 or 27 for 277 yards and two touchdowns. Matt Stafford threw for for 350 yards. He was pretty good too. He took a few good. Licks there, but kept on ticking, kept on playing. This was a real entertaining or real fun game. Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the game of the weekend. I'm not sure how today's games will turn out. We'll talk about those games tomorrow. But congratulations to the Lions on their first playoff win in over 30 years, and their first home playoff win in over 30 years. And some poetic justice here, because a few weeks ago, when the Lions got screwed in that Cowboy game, a two-point conversion. Well, when they finally penalized that referee team, they downgraded them, and they're not doing a playoff game this year. Good. It's about time you stop punishing these guys. And two, because the Cowboys were given a gift, I, I, I don't lose over sleep over the fact they got killed yesterday. And the fact that the Lions won yesterday means they have a home playoff game next week anyway. They will place... They will face the winner of today's Buccaneers Eagles game. Again, we'll talk about that game tomorrow. That game is tonight. So there you have it. Those uh, Saturday and Sunday results of the Wild Card Weekend. We have two more games today, thanks to Mother Nature and Buffalo. So hey, not a way to spend a federal holiday watching two football games. And of course, my Knicks are coming on in a few hours, so that would be fun too. Let me know what you think. We'll talk to you later.